Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to create flowcharts using LibreOffice Draw. So in this example uh, we're going to create a flowchart for an e-commerce website. So here's an e-commerce website that I've built before. It's called JediRobe.com. It's a Star Wars website and it's a typical e-commerce website. It has categories, customers can log in, they can select uh, different options so they can click on a particular category and then they can browse products they can run through a checkout process they've got customer login um, and normally when i'm creating complex projects like this uh, it's quite complicated to build e-commerce um, a flow chart diagram is a nice way to represent the information or the steps uh, for such a project so this this website was custom built you can see all the different options and you can add to basket you can do certain things so we're going to create a basic overview of this project or an e-commerce project in general and then that way i could hand it over to my developers and they could build the basic engine for this e-commerce model so let's start off with libreoffice draw so libreoffice uh, draw is here the first thing I want to do is save my document. So go to I'll just save this document here. You'll give your file a, a new name here and click save. And I prefer to see everything in landscape in this example, so I'm going to set it to landscape. And we've got some different options here in different tools. I'm going to create a basic chart. I'm going to use rectangle tool and the join tool here to join the elements together. So I'm going to draw a box here. And once I've drawn the box, I can double click inside the box and type in some text. I'm going to type customers here. And we'll select that. <coughs> And we'll change it to we'll change it to aerial font and we'll make the font a bit smaller, it's a bit big. We'll set it to something like 14. And we can probably make this box a bit smaller as well. Something like this. So this box represents customers coming into the website. We can click on the outside edge of this box. You can see this little uh, cross thing will this, this cross icon will appear. When we click on the outside, that will select this box. We can press Control C on our keyboard and Control V, and that will make a copy of this, and that will keep it all consistent. So it will be consistent size. And in this box here, we want to write in here e-commerce. website so this will represent the actual website itself we can make this a bit more of a square box and we're going to change some colors here later just to represent the different elements of the project so here we've got e-commerce website so we'll click on this box one more time and we'll press ctrl c and ctrl v to copy it and we'll drag it down and here we're writing products product categories and product categories will contain products listings and product listings can be added to a shopping basket So, our customers will come to the website. I'm going to click on this here and I'm going to select this option here, the first one. And I want to connect the customers to the e-commerce shop. Customers will come along and they'll visit the e-commerce website. When they get to the e-commerce website, they're going to browse through some product categories. And the product categories will display specific product listings and they'll be able to add those product listings, not all of them, but some of them that will add to a shopping basket. So we can see a basic workflow being built here. 
So really, we want to distinguish our customers away from the e-commerce store. So we'll click on the e-commerce, sorry, the customers here, the customer box, and we'll make them a different color. We'll just make them green. So we can say, we can just separate the colors here a little bit, just to make it a bit clearer who our customers are and the functions of the e-commerce store. Let's just save this. So let's imagine this workflow at the moment. Let's go to the browser again and we'll go to this Jedi Row website. So I'm a customer, I'm coming to the website and here we can see we're hitting the e-commerce store and we're looking at product categories, product listings and then the shopping basket. Let's test that. We'll look at some product categories. Here we can see product listings. We'll click on a product listing and we can click on a drop down menu here and we can add it to the basket and that will take us to the shopping basket. So really we're looking at this position here where a customer will come to the website, looked at product listings, uh, looked at categories, product listings and added a product to the shopping basket. So the next thing the customer will do is add more products possibly to the shopping basket but at some point they either need to They're either going to register or if they're an existing customer they're going to log in. So they're going to select one of these two options. They'll either register or they'll log in. In fact there'll be one other option above that and that will be the checkout. So let's connect these. And if you want to move the boxes, you can use the arrow keys. That normally moves them by increments and you can get your lines nice and straight. And we'll connect the checkout to either register or the checkout to the login here. Here we can see there's a checkout button and when we click the checkout button the customer can either be a new customer and they can register or they can enter their email and password and they can log in. So in this case we will, we'll, you know, the registration will contain a form. So let's add that actually. normally form processing you'll capture the customers details so on this website we can see if we if we were a new customer we'll click here and we'll fill out an email address and enter the password and enter the capture code to complete the registration or we may just click straight on login and if we were to click on login we'll just enter in our email and our password here. So if we were to click on login, we'll enter our email and password and then the first step will be the billing and delivery billing and the delivery details. So sometimes when you type in text you can see it's going out of the box. You can click on the box and then you can simply resize it to fit the text so it looks a bit clean. So if they log in the first thing they're going to be asked for is their billing and their delivery details. After they enter their billing and delivery details the customer would need to select their delivery options so there might be different delivery options then it may ask them to um, select first class or second class or whatever option it might be the different delivery options you can resize this a bit so 
so it'll ask them for delivery options to select here. And after delivery options, it's going to ask for the payment method. So there's normally a few different options for payment. You may pay via PayPal, you may pay via credit card. There's a few different options there. So we'll show a box to represent that as well. We'll click here and here we can select payment method. And then after they've done the payment method, there'll be a final order summary. So it'll give you an overview in fact, we'll connect that like this. So there'll be an order summary. And then finally, be a payment gateway so if they're paying via PayPal it will take them to PayPal if they're paying via credit card then it may take them to a, a credit card processing system so we'll select that and connect it to this one and after they've made their payment up here there'll be an email order confirmation. So there'll be some type of email that will go to the customer confirming their order. So we can connect this payment gateway after they've made a the payment. There'll be an email confirmation. We also need the website admin, so someone that's administrating the website, taking care of all of the processing, the ordering, managing the website. So we'll put an admin here and the email confirmation will go to the customer and that email confirmation will also go to the website admin. So here we can see pretty much a whole e-commerce store overview, the whole workflow for an e-commerce store. The customer will come to the website, they'll visit the website, they'll select some product categories or they'll browse product categories, they'll look at product listings, they'll add them to the shopping basket, they'll run through a checkout, they'll either register and go through form processing or they'll log in and enter their billing and their delivery details. They'll select the relevant delivery option, whether it's first class or second class. They may select a different payment option. So they may select PayPal or credit card processing. They'll see an order summary. So it will tell them this is your billing details, your delivery details. This is what products you've ordered. This is maybe the VAT amount. This is what delivery option you selected. This is what payment option you selected. They'll click the continue process. They'll go to a payment gateway. They'll enter their credit card or their PayPal details. They'll make the payment. They'll get an order confirmation. And the order confirmation will go to the customer and it will go to the website admin. So this is a full overview of uh, an e-commerce store. And this is normally what I'll give to my developers before they go and build a complex project such as uh, an e-commerce website. So I hope that makes sense. You can apply this logic to any process in your business. It doesn't have to be website design. It could be any type of workflow within your business. It could be how you manage your cash flow. It could be how you manage other types of projects in your business. You could be a builder and you're 
doing a decorating job you could apply this logic to a decorating job or a construction job um, it can be anything it could be uh, an event that you're holding so you can do the workflow for the event how people arrive at the event how you're going to seat them how the presentation will be presented um, any sort of Q&A questions anything like that any type of workflow you can apply it to the logic within your business so I hope that makes sense you can use different shapes to represent different types of elements in the workflow so you know these different shapes can represent different uh, customers could have been represented as triangles or circles or however you want I normally just use the uh, rectangle tool and color the the option a different color to represent different parts of the system so I hope you find this tutorial useful and I look forward to seeing you on the next DCP web tutorial.